Bill Rabinowitz has been covering this story, Ohio State football beat writer for Columbus Dispatch. He joins us now. Bill, how are you today? Good, Dan. How are you? I'm okay. Um, I was wondering, and I've been wondering a couple of things with Urban Meyer, if this was earlier in the summer and not closer to the uh, football season, was there any chance Urban Meyer was not going to be back? That's a good question. Um, we, at the press conference, we did not have the full report at the time. All we had was a three-page summary. So reporters there, including myself, could not ask questions based on the actual findings because we didn't have that yet. So, um, so some of our questions had to be more general because we didn't have specifics to ask about. That's what, and they've not made those people available, President Drake, for example, and I've requested that. So we don't know. Um, we were kind of flying half-blind a little bit in that press conference. I, I do get the sense that President Drake wanted stiffer penalties than some members of the board did, and I think this was a compromise. Uh, how much President Drake wanted, I don't know. We are trying to find that out. Um, but I, 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 it was clearly there was some tension and friction in the room because that meeting that most people thought would be a few hours lasted 10 or 12. Uh, it was a very, very long day. Finish this sentence. Urban Meyer is still Ohio State's head coach because? Well, first of all, he's very good at his job. And secondly, I do not believe they felt that the mistakes that he made were fireable offenses or they didn't want to fire him over those. What do you still want to know? There are a lot of things. I'd like to know, based on the report, uh, why did Urban Meyer have his texts deleted or his phone reprogrammed? so that uh, they deleted texts automatically after one year. I would like to know whether Shelly Meyer told Urban Meyer about the allegations. And, and most of all, honestly, I'd like to know the truth about whether there was domestic violence. We don't know that. Zach Smith was not charged. Um, we don't know why. The Powell Police Department has not been forthcoming about why they did not charge him. It may have been because they didn't believe the accusations. It may have been some other reason. We don't know. There's still this long into the story. There's still more things we don't know than do know, which is which is frustrating. Is this story over? <laughs> no, it's not going to be over. It may never be over. It's not going to be over until Urban Meyer returns. It's not going to be over until Urban Meyer uh, adjusts back to the program he's been divorced from for now a month roughly. Uh, and in terms of Urban Meyer's legacy and reputation and all that, it may never be over. Uh, some of it depends on what happens from here, how much we find out about the veracity of the domestic violence accusations, which will color uh, Ohio State's response to them. Um, no, this story is far from over, unfortunately. I've mentioned this a couple of times this morning, Bill. I think Urban did not say anything about Courtney Smith because in his mind, now just my opinion as I'm, I'm watching him say this, I, I don't know if he believes that there was any domestic violence. Maybe it was just a bad marriage, but that was my feeling. It was after the fact because he was given ample opportunities to say something about her and right. then waited till Friday because I felt like there was some inside pressure to say, well, you know how bad this looks. It looks like you're so insensitive here. And then that's when he came out with the, hey, you know, I'm sorry, you know, what Courtney Smith went through. What do you make right. of uh, Wednesday to Friday? Yeah, I, th I think you might be right. Um, I think one other factor that should be mentioned is that everybody on that podium on Wednesday was absolutely physically and mentally and probably emotionally exhausted. It, as I said, it was a much longer day than most people thought. It probably wasn't a good idea to have the press conference then anyway, especially not giving the media the full report. So there were a lot of, uh, you know, it was very kind of a strange press conference in that way. Uh, and I do think there's something to it. I think there are real questions uh, about what you said. And, and I don't think that, you know, Urban Meyer is, um, he is not going to say something that he doesn't believe. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I, again, the thing is, only two people really know what happened between Zach and Courtney, and that's Zach and Courtney. And, and maybe the Powell Police Department, but we don't know what they really think. So there's so much gray area here, and I, and I just think, you know, and I'm sure Urban Meyer is very upset and very, you know, embarrassed to, to have been suspended. He's a guy who's never had NCAA issues. He's never been suspended, and, and nothing like this. Yeah, there were 
there was a lot of criticism of some of the stuff that happened in Florida with some of the player arrests and things like that. But, but you know, this was kind of a whole new ball game, and I think he's he's deeply hurt by it. You mentioned this in a column, the NCAA and that aspect of this. That the, you know, do you think the NCAA gets involved in in uh, the Ohio State situation? It's a possibility. I don't think that's a, a major major potential story, but it's something that they might look at. Uh, the issue, uh, I think, the biggest issue is when Zach Smith and another Ohio State coach, uh, who was nameless, um, in the in the <laughs> report. Uh, went to a strip club and, and apparently took a high school coach or two alongside. If that, if they paid for the coach, if there was, you know, stuff that happened there, that that could be a an impermissible benefit. Uh, obviously, it's a bad look to go to the strip club anyway. But in terms of the NCAA stuff, it could be an issue as if they gave any kind of benefit to those coaches. Bill, good stuff, and uh, we'll keep reading. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. That's Bill Rabinowitz. He covers the Buckeyes, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, I think the NCAA part of this is what's interesting. And if you really want to get those text messages, you can get those text messages. How badly do you want to? And uh, I don't think there's going to be full transparency here. And even if there is, are we going to know if there's full transparency? But uh, they, they're, they're without him for the first three weeks. Usually pretty easy. What do you have? Oregon State, Rutgers. Then TCU, okay. TCU, okay. But uh, that's about it. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.